Steel Liberty bid to be considered. Good news for Tata Steel, that stock is up 1.8%. We'll get in more details. I think Ashmit's joined us. Ashmit, tell us a little about the Bhushan Power case uh, before you talk to us about uh, 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 the, the, the bench of uh, uh, the Supreme Court uh, talking about uh, 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 passing the order. Uh, uh, directing the JP Associates companies to return nearly 760 acre lands. First, the Bush and Power case, and then the JP Associates case. Ashmit? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, tell us a little about the Bhushan Power case. Uh, uh, NCLAT has uh, gone ahead and uh, uh, given the nod to Tata Steel as well as Liberty to go ahead and acquire Bhushan. Can you tell us a little about that? So what we are picking up is that the NCLAT has clarified in as many words. It's clarified on its earlier order dated 9th of May. There was some confusion on account of But the NCLAT has made it clear that as far as the COC is concerned, both the parties in question, uh, their bids shall be considered, both Tata Steel as well as Liberty House. This, of course, was a move that was opposed fiercely by Tata Steel. Tata Steel's contention is quite clear that Liberty House's bid was, uh, came in much later after their bid became public and hence is ineligible. Uh, but essentially, as of right now, the NCLAT has taken the position that both these companies, their bids shall be considered. One important caveat, however, that needs to be kept in mind is that the NCLAT has said that even if a final decision is arrived at by the COC, it shall be kept in a sealed cover, it shall not be made public, it shall not be finalized. So that's one important relief that has come from Steel's way, at least after the pendency of this application. Another important aspect to keep in mind is, interestingly, a demand that was made over the course of the proceedings by the COC. Uh, frustrated by the processes and, and the litigation, COC today made a demand before the NCLAT that perhaps it would be wise to consider a second round between the two stakeholders, between the two bidders here, Tata Steel and uh, Liberty House. But what's interesting is that, ironically, both the two parties found themselves on the same page in mm -hmm. opposing right. the COC in seeking a second round of bidding. So of essentially, course. as of right now, hmm. both bids to be considered, but no decision to be finalized. Of course, the entire uh, infrastructure for IBC cases has been working on value maximization. But Ashmit, stay on with us. Another important case here is that the Allahabad bench of NCLT, remember, last week passed an order uh, directing JP Associates to really return nearly 760 acres of land to JP Infratech while declaring the transfer of the land as fraudulent and undervalued. Now the lenders to JP Associates have moved the NCLT to get reprieved. So, Ashmit, what are the details there? Uh, well, uh, first, for the benefit of our viewers, just to understand, J is the motor entity, JP Infratech is the corporate debtor that is facing insolvency at the hands of NCLT. Now, with that in mind, here are the facts of the case. Uh, land of JIL, the corporate debtor that is facing insolvency, their land was used uh, for securing loans for their promoters, that's JP Associates. So essentially, land of a subsidiary, GIL, being used for securing loans uh, being extended to the promoter entity, which in this case happens to be JP Associates. Essentially, the NCLT order that had been passed says that this entire transaction was processed and that essentially assets are being taken off the hands of GIL. And this is a grave given that the company is currently facing insolvency. And essentially, NCLT had sought for the assets to be returned by the lender back to JIL. Right. Now, what's interesting is that as of right now, NCLT making its position quite clear that the mortgage shall continue. All right. Uh, that no decision should be taken on that. To that extent, uh, some relief coming in for the Fair proposal. point there, Ashmin. Uh, Ashmin, thanks a lot for that. We'll keep an eye out on that. Also, watch out for NCC. The stock up 4%. Strong set of numbers coming in. 12% growth on the revenue. 74% growth on the EBITDA. Margins have expanded. And because of which, the net profit has come in higher by 61%. With that,